Hey guys, welcome back. It's Mikey, the mobility and motorsports director here at Fieldcraft Travel with... Rob, I'm the CMO here at Fieldcraft. So we get to do all of the, the fun stuff. All the fun stuff. <laughs> well, welcome. Today we want to talk about setting up camp and how we do it and give you some tips and tricks for some of you who've been asking. Uh, so here we are in uh, beautiful Northern California. You can see how windy it is. Um, that's actually going to come into play with some of the choices that we made today. Yeah. So we were talking about security. Yeah, let's let's maybe talk about this in, in terms of the pillars of preparedness. Um, so let, let's go through those real quick and then let's jump in and, cool. and talk through. So if you're each. looking to organize, use these pillars. There's food, water, shelter, comms, med, and security, which is the most important. Yep. So yeah, let's start with security. So location is everything. When you're planning your trip, you're, you know, like us here, we're like, we want to go to Northern California. I want to be by the water. Um, check, that's what we're going to do. When we arrive, the first thing we do is we survey the area. And from a security standpoint, the high ground is always going to be the most secure and you're going to be the most advantage in that spot. However, comma, <laughs> the environment may say otherwise. You don't want to be in a tent, uh, whether it's a rooftop tent or a ground tent where the wind is just ripping through. So yeah. the high ground is good for security, but not necessarily good for sleeping. Yeah. And so, yeah, we've got not good for sleeping and then also just blowing everything, blowing everything around, around. <laughs> and, and it's often it's it's open up top it's right. it's more exposed yes. and so that could play into it as well 100 percent. so choose accordingly right for us there is a little bit of a high ground up here when we surveyed it but we want to be close to the water so that's why you're seeing this here another point too is as you're coming in and it's I don't know if it's like shameful to say this, but we are looking for a camping spot that is flat. I, I can't sleep when all the blood is rushing <laughs> to my head or, you know, so that is part of what we're looking for. Sliding, uh, just sliding over every Sliding minutes. over yeah, everything. <laughs> and that's why you see the way that we did this spot. We've talked about this also briefly, but I want to kind of point this out here too, is just as it is day, it will be night here, regardless of if you're in an area that's got extended amounts of light or extended amounts of dark. So uh, in terms of security, you do need to see what you're going to be doing you Light, know, just lighting more, is huge lighting is huge right you, to protect your vehicle as well but also yourself so when we're in here uh, the way that we set up and use the lights is in that manner to protect what we're doing also keep in mind a lot of what we talk about is based around a semi-permissive you know environment we're in the united states it's california there's not much that we need to worry about if that were to change like in a bug out scenario these are also things that i want you to consider as you're listening to this yeah that's generally true with the the two-legged predators but there are there are also animals you got to consider and that plays into a little bit with the food and the other Excellent. stuff and how you set things up to making Good sure points. that you're deterring the animals from coming into camp 100 percent. also if you're rolling through in a big giant you know gladiator that's used for marketing it's it's, <laughs> it's just it's just the giant target on you all these lights you know in the middle of the night everyone's going to be able to see it so just something to consider i think that's it for security yeah i mean uh, I'll also point out, we probably are a little over the top mm. with our, our camp setup. Mm. Um, this is what we do for, yeah. for professionally. Yeah. We do it recreationally, personally as well. And so we have a lot of things here. Yeah, um, absolutely. More so than I would expect most people would have. Um, and so making sure you're taking care of that, um, both from the environmental factors as yeah. well as uh, keeping things secure. So next, let's talk about food. We'll make our way over here through the, uh, the campsite. You know, humans have been using temperature and fire right? To create yeah. and prepare food for centuries, right? Yeah. So there's many ways that we can do it. We've started using, and I've really come to like this thing, the disco style, Scottle style, yep. you know, products. This is iCampers Disco, but we do have a full setup in the back of your... Yep. We've got the, you know, a standard two burner grill with, you know, off of propane, mm -hmm. which we'll use usually as like a, a secondary setup when we have this out too. Um, so we'll cook main food here. We'll cook anything else off to the side if we need yeah. things going at the same time. We do sometimes roll with a big group. So yeah. we need, we need a contingencies. We need options, options and contingencies. Here you see this setup. I typically have this hard mounted to the side of my truck and we just cook off the side of the truck. But just because of the way that everything's positioned, it's really easy to pull it off. The mm -hmm. other thing too, make sure you're considering um, the current regulations. There has been some pretty high fire risk. Yep. So uh, we're not allowed to make fire, which is why we're running all propane. That's allowed with the permit here. Um, mm -hmm. And that's why you see this like that, but also even our campfire. Make sure you're doing that. Let's talk real quick about transporting food. Yes, um, yes. We're big, big fans of fridges, 100%. right? It, it's not for everybody. They they do tend to be quite expensive and you've got to make sure that you can power them, mm -hmm. which again, adds to the cost. But if you're going to go out, especially for extended periods of time, managing cold food yep. is is very important. And so Absolutely. running, you know, some Dometic fridges and they have their, 
their PLBs, their batteries that mm -hmm. can run those. Um, and then we've got Zamp solar panels yep. to help yep. power those while we're out in the field, which yep. uh, can work great. They can also have some challenges yep. in ter terms of finding sun and making sure that you're getting enough power in. Yeah. Um, but you start learning kind of how to manage it and, and what what power you're using, what power you can bring in. Um, as you as you test it out. Absolutely, and that is the step up from, let's say, backpacking to overlanding or mobility-centered rig, right? Yeah. It's just that step up, it's an extension of your rucksack. Uh, food is done in a way here that I feel like we even eat better than most of the times at we, home. We eat pretty good, yeah. <laughs> I always say yes. that my favorite time of day is when it's time to eat. But overlanding <laughs> is really just that, right? I mean, camping is just that. We go a thousand miles or travel eight hours like we did yesterday yep. to go eat somewhere. So food's important. Uh, make sure you're using fridges. Uh, you don't want to get sick either, right? Yeah. I mean, that's one of those things is bacteria can grow if that's not happening, like chicken and your fish and stuff like, like we're eating. Oh, I you, just, know, and you don't want to deal with that. The days of the, the soggy food yeah. from the, the coolers. Yeah. I don't miss those. No, not at all. And that's the thing, right? Uh, ice might be difficult to source. So that's how we do our food section. Um, I think as we make our way, uh, what are we talking about next? Water? Uh, let's talk water. Cool. So water like food is one of the limiting factors with the amount of time that we can spend out here, right? Yeah. Um, so as we go through this, I want you to kind of keep that in mind. Uh, there's a couple of really basic principles that we're going to go through that will help you extend that time, I guess. Yeah, right? I mean, manage we, it. we essentially have water that we bring with us that we've got to transport and then we can acquire water wherever you're going, but then you also have to make sure that you're cleaning it and, yes. and properly making sure it's uh, good to drink. 100%. And that's the differentiation between two of the ways that I store water, right? I have drinking water mm -hmm. and then I have potable water that I can use to clean, wash, take a shower. Yeah. Hygiene's huge as part of the, you know, the water stuff. So um, I carry water on a Rotopax Right now I have about four gallons because it'll support me for four days. I typically do a gallon, gallon a day per just as a contingency. Day. I'm not like sucking that down, although I do try. Um, and then you just extend that per, you know, member in your family. So I can double stack them in the roto packs. Uh, but I also have a new product to us that you can actually use to filter and make yeah. it. So you, you can bring, I think it's, was it five gallons? Yes. Six gallons, four gallons? It's right around there. Um, you can bring that with you, but as you use it, then you can, refill it and it has a built-in filter yeah. so that you can just put the water in mm -hmm. and then as you use it it'll filter the water 100%. so, so carrying water is huge uh you have an extended tank in the trailer yeah, there's a 32 gallon tank on the trailer with a sink a water mm -hmm. pump a shower. shower so i'm using it for drinking for cooking yeah. for cleaning for showering uh washing stuff off uh everything and when you bring a trailer or something big that allows yeah. you to carry that Again, it extends the your capabilities in terms of, of how long you can yep. stay, how many people you can support, that type of thing. So to kind of, in conclusion with water, you need to be able to find water, which is where we're at. Look at the low-lying areas. Um, mm. If you're out and you're able to get a good look, like at a herd, I mean, mm. of elk or deer, they'll show you where water's at because yeah. they have to drink too. Um, so find water. You need to be able to collect water, treat water, and then store water or yeah. carry collect water. collect and store. Mm. a lot of people... Oh, we can filter it, but then we can't. What do you do with it? But then you can't store it. So if you can store it, you need to make sure you can clean it. If you yeah. don't have a filter, you can boil it. Make sure you get it to a rolling boil, and, yeah. and then it's it's safe. Um, but you've got to be able to go through the whole process to be able to drink the water. Right. The Nobody end. wants Giardia. Nobody <laughs> wants to lose control of, uh, you know what I'm saying. We've all played Oregon Trail. <laughs> Nobody wants that. <laughs> so that's water. So next we'll talk about shelter. Yep. So the next point we're going to talk about is shelter. And these top three food, water, shelter, they're basic human needs, yep. right? Um, one of the things that I want you to consider is the IOU acronym. Uh, you guys know at Phil Craft, we are obsessed with acronyms. I think that's because... It helps remember things. It helps remember right? things. So IOU, you need to sleep in, on, and under something for shelter. And there's a ton of different ways that we can do it. So what's yeah. your preferred method? So... I mean, I've been using the trailer, which has a cabin inside, so I can sleep inside the cabin fully enclosed. Mm -hmm. um, real walls. Real walls, yeah. uh, doors, windows, like all the things. Um, I'm getting a little older, <laughs> and sleeping on the ground isn't as fun as it used to be, um, which I've done plenty of right, in my life, right? right? I've done on the ground. I've slept on a cot. I've slept in a, on a mm -hmm. pad in a, a ground tent. Um, you've got... This is nicer for yeah. me, um, but it's also a lot more expensive, a lot more space. Yes. And as we found out last night, reduces your capabilities uh, for maneuverability in, in, on the trail. 100%. Um, they're very capable. It's a very capable trailer, 
but it's big. It's got some limitations. And, and you've got some yeah. limitations on the trail. Well, and I like that you said that, because honestly, I always get some younger guy who's like, oh, that's glamping. As a matter of fact, this morning, <laughs> this morning on Instagram, somebody put that on Amber's post. And it's that just funny to me. To camping I know, right? All, right. But, and whatever. that's, dude, I'm trying to come out here and have a good time. Remember? Yeah. So like, that's part of it. Yes, we're Fieldcraft Survival. Kevin Estella sleeps in holes all the time. He's great. Right? And, and I, <laughs> I used to like take pride in, in doing it as rough as I could. 100%. That's not the but case But it's, <laughs> it's not the case anymore. Like, look, I'm sorry. I, right. I, I enjoy some comforts yes. and, and it's yes. more fun. I like to explore yeah. in different ways. Yeah. Um, 100%, there are places that I've seen in my life that are amazing yeah. that you can only get to on foot. One, I've done the and, same thing. And yes. worth it 100%, 100%, but it comes at a price. Absolutely. Right? Absolutely. Your body's ages yes sir and and the needs change over time like you know that guy's probably a single guy yeah, that's great mm -hmm. i have a family you know three kids yeah. wifey dog like i said and you know some of their stuff we talk about the rooftop tent works great for us just to get us to a rat yep. and it fits the kind of vehicle that i want to use to recreate okay this is a recreational site this is what we're doing that's why we talk about operate the outdoors Look, so as long as you're comfortable mm -hmm. to your standards mm -hmm. you're safe and warm mm -hmm. Do whatever you want. Like 100%. you can sleep on the ground with a sleeping bag yep. for all I care. Like, but make sure that you're doing it. Have something underneath you. Yep. Have something protecting you from the weather and sleeping in something go. that's keeping you you warm enough. In on and under. I owe you. Next we got comms, I think. Comms? Yeah, let's talk about comms. Okay. Yeah. Communications. So I have in my hand the little GMR2 from Rugged Radios. Highly yeah. recommend these yeah. to run GMRS. Uh, ham was all I heard about when I first started getting into yeah. communications and I, I'm gonna be honest. I look at that test and I'm like, no, sorry, like this isn't <laughs> happening. GMRS, you can use a radio. Yeah. You can learn how to use a walkie-talkie, like you learned how when you were like a, kid, a yeah. year old. Yeah. Um, and you're good. Right. Like you don't need to worry about all the electricity, and exactly, the voltage, and all that because you just use a, a, a lower power radio that works for our purposes. One hundred percent. So for setting up camp, um, they're really inexpensive for the the 10 year license is 30 bucks yeah go to the fcc website sign up get that done 35 35 dollars sorry but it covers your whole family your whole family 10 years for 10 years mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. it's way better. it's a no-brainer so at camp uh we run handhelds uh make sure you get the one that can usb charge because the other ones need the base yeah. uh, this one only charges in the base yes um using 110 mm -hmm. and so it might be a little difficult it, when it's you're harder to here. charge yeah. when yeah. you're in your vehicle so uh, I highly recommend these. All of us run hard-mounted GMRS radios at a little bit higher wattage. Uh, but in terms of camp, you can use that as a base. And then, like, let's say the kids are hiking or, you know, whatever. You guys disperse. This is a real great way to yeah. stay in I mean, last night. Last night is perfect we, example. We were in a little bit of a mm -hmm. tight spot getting vehicles in and, and out of, of camp. And we're having, we have spotters. And so yeah. instead of yelling... You can use a radio. I mean, we did a little bit of both, but yep. this makes it a lot easier where you can actually give somebody yep. commands for moving a vehicle where they can't see yep. and have them be able to hear you clearly without misinterpreting what you're yelling at them. 100%. It was it was perfect for that situation. Perfect, perfect. So check these out. You have another solution. that. Uh... Yeah, I mean, so we're in Northern California mm -hmm. right now. Uh, there's no cell phone, cell Nothing. reception here, like dead for all of it. So, um, and, and we did a whole video um, you filmed a, a video on communications yes. already. Yes. So we, we go into kind of the pace plan. Yep. Um, but primary is cell phone. Alternate was your Weboost. Yep. Both of those are out. Yep. There's there's nothing on that. So we're already into the contingency and emergency solution. So uh, GMRS is great for communicating mm -hmm. within the group. Even on the drive, we were getting about a mile, a little over a yeah, mile. Yeah, um, of communication between the hard mounted yep. with the antennas. And that was great for just a caravan. Excellent. But... Once you get to communicating with people back home, um, you've got a couple options, right? A satellite device. Yep. So this is the Zolio. This runs off of the Iridium satellite network and it allows me to two-way message with people back home. Mm -hmm. um, and so I've been communicating with my wife, sending a few work messages um, and just generally being able to communicate. One of the nice things about going out is getting off the grid, yep. but 
making sure that you can, you know, send the messages. And the nice thing about this is I, I can control most yeah. of the flow. I, yeah. I can give the number. It's a separate number. So it's not my phone number. Mm -hmm. So it's not like I'm just getting all the messages, but I can control a little bit more who I'm communicating with and making sure that if I was in an emergency, yep. I have something that I can send for help. Absolutely. And just general messages, non-emergency. Uh, the new iPhone has satellite messaging, which is amazing. But you can't just send satellite messages yet. Yeah. I'm sure they will, but we'll get there. Um, but you can yeah. only use it to communicate in emergency situations. And so um, this allows me uh, the ability to ability do non emergency to communications. And then we do have what you see behind us. <laughs> so we obviously uh, run the company. We, we have a lot that we have to do for work. Yeah. And so we use this for our events. And we bring it off grid when we are going to be gone for a little, an extended period of time so that we can communicate. So this is the Starlink. It is on their portable mode so we can move it around and we can go. So we, we turn it on for a little bit here to yeah. send and receive messages and, and check on certain things yep. and make sure we can get some work done. Um, obviously you guys know we do a ton of content. And ton of that, content. You know, we, we need that yes. um, to be able to do that. That's not a necessity, but not it's right. something that people are, uh, it, it's becoming more affordable. Yeah. You don't have to spend $20,000 to get satellite internet anymore um, it's much more affordable and it's becoming more mainstream and yep. so people that live in rvs this is a great solution people that go out for extended periods of time with their vehicles have space yeah. have the ability to power it and need that uh, it's, it's, it's it's yeah so to con, con to conclude all this that we're talking about you need to answer who more than anything when it comes yep these were great for us caravan in camp this runs our company i mean there's most of us, you guys don't know this, but there's only a handful of us that really do everything at the company. That's why that's here. Uh, so we got food, water, shelter, comms. The next thing we're going to talk about is med. And yeah. I think we'll close it out from there. Yeah. Yeah. Let's talk about med. Now to wrap everything up, we're going to talk about med and it's not the least of our worries. Last but not least, my dad always used to say that. So now <laughs> I say it because I'm a dad and I love embarrassing <laughs> my children. Um, and what we're going to be talking about is more of the camp based med kit, right? Yeah. Uh, ready access is huge for us in anything that we do. So we're not going to really talk, you know, the vehicle yeah. stuff. We, we've talked a talk lot about, about placement yeah. and what you keep in your vehicles, but this is the Fieldcraft duffel 20 liter this, dude. Uh, in orange that I use to distinguish mm -hmm. med in my vehicle. Mm -hmm. So I got a, the black bags in there, but when I want to this color. med, this is easy to spot and I can grab this and and you not, can easily communicate this too. Mm -hmm. Someone's there, orange boy, bag. grab the orange bag. <laughs> and so, yeah, this is what I bring to camp. It focuses largely on temperature control uh, of the body. So hypothermia, it's got some Mylar space blankets and uh, some hypothermia kits in yep. here, um, as well as burns and stuff. I've got perfect. burn cream in here. If you get fire, yep. caught with fire, whatever. Yep. Yeah, so it's then, perfect for camp. So that's what we're trying to do is get you prepared for what may or may not happen. I cut my finger eating mm -hmm. an apple earlier, right? So little bumps <laughs> and boo-boo boo kit is always uh, needed. Uh, we do always carry uh, tourniquets, yep. which I, there, I guess there could be a scenario in camp that's more of like a mobility thing when we're running and car crashes, but that's also yeah, a staple. Axes and stuff and yeah. saws that you, yeah. you could get a... You could do that. You could nick an artery um, or something. But there's a couple of pieces that I really want to show you that I think are important. One, because, well, I haven't had to use them yet, but we definitely have had this accident in the past, and that is, you know, broken bones. My little girl actually was hopping around at home. Uh, her and her brother decided to jump on and off the couch, and she actually got a spiral fracture on her left tibia, okay? So my little ones, you know, sometimes this happens, or as adults, I have weak ankles, maybe you'll break something, okay? So one thing that I like to keep, and this is uh, something that my wife taught me, she's a family nurse practitioner, is the Flexol splint. This you can deploy really quickly, and it'll form to whatever you need. So immobilization is great for a broken bone, sprained yep. um, or something like that uh, to begin the process of treatment so this is real great to have it small. similar to the sam splint similar to the same uh, exactly same idea same idea so the other thing that i do has have is in the event of something a little bit more tragic or something where the person cannot move i actually do have an emergency stretcher here you can see it's a little dirty because it is but the disposable emergency stretcher goes in there it actually folds out has carrying handles you lay the person Make in and then two people to can get carry a person them out if yeah. needed yeah so just something for uh to recover a person out of it and then yeah. the normal bumps yeah. and, bruises. and this is our mobility trauma kit again what we recommend to keep it in vehicles i'd keep one of these in here as well just one in case side. so i have i can cover down on uh, most things um at camp if I need to, to bring this with me. Good kit, everything is Velcro. You guys know me, I'm obsessed with multicam and Velcro. So that easily deploys. Uh, where can they find this, Rob? Uh, 
a lot of this med stuff we do carry on Fieldcraft Survival website, uh, fieldcraftsurvival.com. Um, these are yeah. coming soon. I need this. And uh, we, uh, we're excited about them, um, expanding the, the line of duffels that we have. And so, and then, yeah, uh, we've got the tourniquets on the website, all that. Website. Awesome. Well, thank you so much. We hope that you like this real short video on how to set up camp, camp considerations, and the way it pertains to the pillars of preparedness and survival. Yeah, just upping, <laughs> upping your game a little bit at a time. 100%. So. Well, you know what, though? The gear videos and, and those videos, I think that um, we do get a lot of requests for those. So, you know, let us know in the comments if you want to see more of that stuff. Uh, there's always gear to talk about, test out, try out. These are just some of the ways yeah. that we do it. Sounds good. Thanks, guys. Awesome. Mikey, Rob, Rob. have a good one.